Malik Posse, and welcome to the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Hey, so a top question that I had on my Instagram questions this past week is, you know, how did you improve your prolapse symptoms? So welcome back to the show, everybody. I am Dr. Amanda Fisher, and this is the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. And I want to dive in as we move into 2024 how I improved my pelvic organ prolapse, my cystocele, my bladder prolapse after developing it. And maybe not diving on how exactly I did that this week, but going over my journey and maybe some of you can um, experience a little or have experienced a little bit of the symptoms as much as I have. So after my firstborn, I had this emergency C-section And at the eight week mark, I was released from my doctor. Scar looked good. Everything was good to go. I was ready to get back into exercising. So the day that I was told by my doc that I was good to go to exercise, I went out for a three mile run. Now, let's keep in mind, prior to pregnancy and delivery, I was a runner. I was an avid athlete. I had done sports my whole entire life. And I was training for like six half marathons a year pre-children, pre-pregnancy. I was training for a half marathon while pregnant up until about 26 weeks and then moved into like a six mile walk a day with my dogs at the time. I had an American Eskimo and a a Siberian Husky and we did a lot of walking, three miles in the morning, three miles at night, so about six miles a day. And I thought, shoot, I'd be good to go. Me neither, Siri. (laughs) I thought I would be good to go um, once released from the doc. I did not have my physical therapy helmet on or hat on to really think about, hmm, had I done anything for eight weeks? Had I been sitting a lot, having a lot of bed rest? Yes. I did not think about it as a PT on how I would rehab myself. It was more like I needed to get out and have a stress reliever. So when my doc gave me that A-OK, I went straight out and went for a three-mile run at eight weeks postpartum. My body was not ready for that. And that was eight weeks after a C-section. So I developed a little bit of a bladder prolapse, a stage two, to be in fact, if anybody's wondering or has a prolapse themselves, I had a stage two bladder prolapse, meaning I vaginally could feel some pressure. There's something happening down there, a little pressure in my pelvic floor, maybe after a night of no sleep, after sitting with poor posture, after baby wearing my kiddo, after um, holding my sick kiddo all day, I, after being on my feet for a long period of time of doing the dishes, doing the laundry, all the things that moms do. After being at work on my feet and working with patients, I would feel this pressure and it didn't go away. And again, started out after I went out for a run postpartum. What I should have done that I wasn't doing then was, and what this is what I do with my patients now, is I get them on a walking program before they jump out and start running. So with my walking program with my patients, I want them walking about 30 to 40 minutes, about four times a week. Four to five is the goal that I give them. And I don't want that on just a flat surface. I love terrain. I love uneven terrain. I love going outside and being able to walk a little bit of hills and coming back down. I have patients that do this on a treadmill and I did this on a treadmill and I actually did this on a treadmill because I knew I liked uneven terrain and it's cold in the Midwest where we live in the winter time. I would get on a treadmill myself and walk for 30 minutes at an incline. That would make my prolapse symptoms worse. So then I started doing this where I would go up for a little bit, like a 2% incline for about two minutes and then back down. And I would test myself for a short walk. I would do less time than if I was just going outside and walking or less time than I was doing if I was doing a flat surface because I'm now increasing my incline. If I toned it down, would I have the same symptoms? Did I have pressure? Did I have pain? Did I have bladder leakage? Those are things that we want to avoid with any exercise that we're getting back into, not just postpartum, but anytime. We don't want to have increased bladder leakage or fecal leakage. We don't want increased pressure down in the vaginal area. We want to avoid any increased pelvic pain, hip pain, low back pain, tailbone pain. We also want to increase if it develops difficulty of having a bowel movement because that can tell us the muscles are not functioning well, all of those symptoms. So really getting back and into it mindfully of going less and listening to my body. 
similar to a couch to a 5k only when i'm getting back into like a walking program that part is walking and i'm changing up that incline when i'm getting into a running program that's going to be for a whole nother video but we're going to offset where you actually stop to help decrease those type of symptoms and that'll be another episode coming up something else i should have done with my new first born which i did not was check in with a pelvic floor physical therapist i should have found a local one go checked out my pelvic floor i did not until actually my second or my third and actually i did find one after my first but it wasn't until about 10 months postpartum i should have done this much sooner i should have done it during pregnancy and i should have done it right at that six weeks eight week mark after having my kiddo i should have worked on pelvic floor mobility meaning i want to know can what does it feel like and can i do it can i contract my pelvic floor up what we would call a kegel can I put it all the way back down? Can I feel that elevator drop all the way back down to the lobby? If I can't feel that in all different positions, I need to work on that. So I should be able to pick up my pelvic floor, put it all the way back down when I'm laying on my back. That means I'm not fighting gravity. I'm just picking it up, putting it down. I should be able to do that with pillows underneath my high knees. So now I'm kind of propped up in a bridge type position. Now gravity is helping me contract that tissue. So being pillows underneath my feet, underneath my pelvis with my knees bent, tipped up like a bridge position. Can I contract and put it all the way back down? What does it feel like? How many repetitions of that can I do? My goal would be five to 10, working on putting it or releasing it all the way back down. And then again, taking those pillows out, doing it flat. Can I do it in a child's pose? position or a puppy pose where my butt's a little bit higher in the air, kind of like a downward dog. It's just modified where your butt's up in the air and the body's kind of tipped down like a little triangle. Can I do that leaning onto furniture? So if I'm leaning forward, if I'm sitting and leaning forward at a table, sitting or standing and leaning onto the countertop, onto the arm of the couch, what does that feel like to put it in those positions to contract that pelvic floor up, put it all the way back down? I want somebody's pelvic floor to be able to work on movement in all different positions. And that's something I have my new moms working on very early postpartum. And then stretching. What does it feel like to get into like a butterfly, butterfly position, a happy baby, a child's pose? Is it uncomfortable at a cesarean scar if you've had a C-section? Can you get into a deep squat? How can you get up off the ground? Can you get up half kneeling? when you're going to pick up a blanket or a passy off the ground to stand back up and blowing out with all of those movements. Can I blow as I go to stand up or do I find myself holding my breath? So these are a few things that I like to work on and I did work on at the very early stages to help decrease my prolapse or pressure feeling symptoms down there. And we've got much more that we'll go over in the next episode. So if you have any questions on this, please comment below um, with what you're dealing with or what you've noticed. And then like and subscribe to the show. Share with any friends who are newly postpartum or who might be dealing with prolapse symptoms because these are things we definitely want to get going. Oh, one more thing. A pessary is something I wish I would have done too. And this is something that I prescribe to my patients and have them talk with like their gynecologist or your urogyn to help fit them for a pessary so they can stay active while we're working on retraining the muscles down there. So like I said, comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, but we'll be hitting this topic again in weeks to follow. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Happy 2024. Hey, pelvic posse. I want to thank you so much for joining into this week's episode of the Empower Your Pelvis podcast. Can I ask you a couple of favors, please? Number one, can you like and subscribe to this podcast so that you can continue to empower your pelvis forever so that you will never miss out? Number two, can you leave us a rating and a review telling them how amazing we are and everything that you have learned about your pelvic health? And then number three, if you haven't seen the video version of this podcast, you can go over to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash empower your pelvis for all your visual learners out there. We have all types of great visuals in there for you to not only listen to, but to also watch. Thank you so much again, and make sure to give your pelvis some love. Until next time, peace out pelvic posse.